Hi everyone, Tim Kitschow, and here to bring home the bacon are Big Rye and the Fat Guy. Boom shakalaka! Yeah, and I got three holes. What's going on YouTube? It's the NFL Super Bowl 55 pick against the spread video for the 2020-2021 NFL season. Fat Guy, for this season we are 131, 134, and 3. This is going to be the first time in our in our illustrious YouTube career where we are not going to break 500 for the season. Your thoughts? Well, I mean, let's be honest here. This is picking every game ATS. We don't like doing this because we, we don't actually bet every game ATS. How many times I say don't bet this is a contest pick? So I guess I get a little bit. I'm trying to give myself a little bit of leeway for uh, this poor, poor performance. And this is the funniest part. We had a great year <laughs> uh, as far as uh, actual betting. So... Funny just how that ends up working out. Either way, though, um, ATS were still uh, hovering around juice territory, depending on what you got. Still beating minus 105 for the total. So I guess that's something that's good, considering I have to pick every single game. And you're supposed to, you're supposed to uh, come out a loser over these overall. It's very difficult. But anyways, on to the next one there, Big Rye. So we do have the Super the Bowl one. 55 game. This game is going to be played on Sunday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern time kickoff between the Kansas City Chiefs and the surprising home Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I don't have the, yeah. the data in front of me, but as far as I can remember in recent history, there hasn't been a team that's uh, been able to host the Super Bowl and play in it in the same year. I so think congratulations. it's the first time. So, I mean, it, but this, like... You know, for those uh, those tinfoil hatters, uh, the NFL is rigged. I don't know. They've got a feather in their cap this year because let's be honest, right? But then again, think about it this way. It, if this is the first time that it's happened in, what, 50-something years or at least over the last 33 years or what have you, again, we don't have it in front of us. But, I mean, that's pretty – that makes sense though, right? Like one – it should this should happen, you know, if every all teams were neutral, right? It should happen one in thirty-three years, right? There, you know, there's roughly what a, a eight nine percent chance that the Bucks were going to make the Super Bowl, anyways, right? So that's that's not that unreasonable, right? When you weight it that way, and they seem to pick teams that teams usually are newer stadiums or have been tend tend to be better teams at least, anyways. Like New Orleans had a few kick of the cans, very strong team. It was it was more than likely this was going to happen, anyways. But part about the tinfoil hatters that boy, that they probably get it is Tom Brady is on the Bucks. The Bucks make the Super Bowl, and they're playing Mahomes. Like they couldn't ask for a two more photogenic, likable guys, and polarizing too. Brady more so between the two between Mahomes and Brady. It's very uh, it's good for the league, big right? Let's call it that. I didn't think I'd hear the word photogenic used on this show, but there you go. So on to the actual game: Kansas City Chiefs taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Super Bowl Fifty Five. Uh, the Bucks opened as three and a half point underdogs, uh, technically at home in the Super Bowl, representing the NFC. Uh, only 36% of betters are on the Bucks. I'll throw a nice little uh, tidbit in as well. 5,069 bets in this game so far, and 16% of the money has been bet on the Buccaneers against the spread. So not only is the public on the Chiefs at minus three and a half or minus three, depending on the book you're looking at. Uh, but 84% of the money support is on the Chiefs early on with already 5,000 bets placed on this game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's Chiefs support across the way. They're uh, they're the Kansas City Chiefs. are the best team in the league. They've lost how many actual, how many games with Mahomes starting? Like, you can't, you can't count that Chargers game. But, I mean, what, like one game this year? How many last year with him starting? Like, I think as a starter, he's like 28 and 5 or 28 and 4, 29 and 4, something in that range. And big rise of doing a little bit fact checking here because most all my stats are a little bit off and they come from the old the old brain. I'm not a I'm not as big of a cool computer guy like that leprechaun over there mirroring me. But um, Mahomes' career, he's 38 and 8 in 46 games and 46 starts. And that doesn't even that's Ricky year included and stuff. That's just it's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good so i mean that's why that's why they're the kansas city chiefs they're the best team in the league they're a dynasty potentially as some people are calling them those are all just words here the what we care about is number and betting the number and if i got three and a half good juice i'm gonna consider the buccaneers all full disclosure 
I rarely bet, rarely bet Super Bowls. Uh, just because, don't forget, these are the sharpest lines because they want equal money because this is the biggest, the biggest share, the biggest game of the year, right? Could could see upwards of 100,000 plus bets. And that doesn't even include, like, how many bets are being made between, you know, Harry and Frank, right? To use two antiquated names, right? Like, how many, how many, like, it's probably what? what I think 10 million bets would be un, not unreasonable to say on this game. So, I mean, like, if you were to count everything, obviously we're never going to get data for that because, like I said, most of it's between Harry and Frank or Peter and Paul uh, to go biblical on you. But I think that the uh, uh, what the book really wants is you get, you know, you get 100, 110 on one side, you get 110 on the other, you keep the $10. It's easy business, right? You didn't do anything. You took money from Peter, you paid Paul, off you go. To Now we're, now we're just doubling down on idioms here. So it, but it does work, right? So that's why I tend to not like these ones because I feel like you're going to be a loser betting on both sides and go, well, fat guy, how can that be? So there, there's one winner and one, there's one loser. Yeah, but there's long-term winners and long-term losers. And when you pay commissions for everything, you're going to be, end up being a long-term loser. Chances are, if you're paying hefty commissions, especially on games that are at equilibrium, but it is interesting. I'm going to concede. When, the, when it waffles between three and three and a half, obviously the juice implications is making it close, right? Because three and a half with heavy juice and three with light juice are, uh, or sorry, three and a half with light juice and three with heavy juice are very, makes them close to interchangeable. And that's why I always say knowing the value of a point and knowing the value of this half point. And by the way, this is the most key half point in the N- like in all NFL scoring. Uh, roughly 15% of games end by three. That doesn't mean that the, the, the favorite is going to win by three necessarily, but it does strongly indicate that the the most likely result is probably Kansas City minus three. And the book probably doesn't want that because then they have to return pushes or all ties. They're of course they're going to clean up on everything when it comes to derivative markets uh, within this game, and of course prop betting. Prop betting is going to be just a giant cash cow, not as well as much as the game itself, but. That's why they want a half number, to be honest. And they're probably going to skew it with juice on each side. But it, it is it is one of those games because maybe Kansas City minus three is the true number. But they might really want minus three and a half. But they charge a juice percentage. But then they risk taking exposure on the bucks. It's one of those things. Because pros will eventually... Pros know what the number should be, right? So you can't just open yourself up, right? Like if they're going to... The other thing, too, about uh, the Super Bowl is there's no limit. There's no limit to bets you can make. This is probably, well, you know, you showed up with a billion dollars, not that you could. And I don't think anyone here, even the collective of our users has a billion dollars or our viewers rather. But if you showed up, they couldn't take it. But, you know, you you can, showing up with a million dollars in cash has happened many, many, many times on the Super Bowl in the sports book, believe it. There's a, I heard a story at uh, uh, one Vegas, uh, he liked working, he, he was a, uh, an executive, and he, but he liked working the front desk on Super Bowl, and uh, he's taking out the high limit action. He said two guys that have never bet before showed up with over a million cash in seven minutes, like guys that they don't recognize. Very interesting stuff. So this is that like you can't do that on air. Like a lot of these games, you can bet like at closing what forty, fifty grand. Yeah, you know, which is a lot of money. It's a lot of money. We're not saying that, but like this is the only time you can show up with a million dollars and be like, oh sure, yeah, that sounds good. Like, and it's not like a weird, you know, guys running in the back with the phone and stuff like that. They're prepared for all this stuff, right? And they're even, they have strategies involved with taking the bet and whether it's going to move the line, what price they're going to set for somebody. Because if you, that's the other thing too. If you show up with a whole bunch of cash, you're not just going to get what's on the board necessarily. There might be a little commiseration and they might have to make some sort of, uh, you know, because they got to look at their their positions on the game as well, right? Because it's a financial market. But all of that being said, <clears throat> they have to be careful. And um, I'll give you another little story just to side, because this is just one game, so we can go for it. A friend of mine was waiting in line uh, during the Seahawks-Broncos uh, bet, and he had a duffel bag full of money, just just filled to the brim. And uh, there was guys with hockey bags, and they're waiting in line, and all the Joes were betting on the uh, on the Broncos, and every time the line moved up to half a point, I believe it was three to three and a half. Someone with a duffel bag would come in, drop the whole load, and then the line would move back down to three. Then, you know, 500 Joes or so would make their bets on the Denver Broncos. Then someone from the other one 
would wheel over one of the guys. They'd grab a duffel bag, drop it on the Seahawks, and then they move it again, right? So I, this is one of those things where that's a possibility of what could happen between uh, Joe's betting on the Chiefs and the Bucks betting on three and a half, or uh, pros taking three and a half on the Bucks. But that was, that's just stories. These aren't they aren't necessarily correlated. It's not like that at all. It's just the idea of how you can bet so much on a Super Bowl and how this market is different than others, which is what we're interested in realistically is sport markets. And this is the big one. It's the difference, and uh, that's why they're uh, they're. They don't want to take exposure. They just want to take. They just want to take the juice. That's it. Lightning round, fat guy. Who do you like, Kansas City or Tampa Bay against the spread? The Bucks. I didn't even really go on about that. That huge rant. <laughs> pick contest. We're taking the Bucks. Okay. And, and then for the leaderboard, the NFL playoffs picks against the spread. We have a two-way tie at the top after twelve games between Gay for Fat Guy and Intergalactic planetary who are both nine and three it's also key to note that triple eight and aka jive turkey are at eight and four so between those top four they are playing for that t-shirt win so as far as picking against the spread in the contest we're not only going to have the game we're going to also have the over under for the super bowl and like uh, fat guy always says it's price is right rules so you guys want to tend to lean uh lower so you don't uh, miss the boat on that OU. It's closest to without going over. So going over is the worst result. But you don't want to go too low because someone else is going to go low. I, I've We have seen a $1 bet. And I, I haven't seen a $1 bet, you know, kind of like when they do the prices, right? I swear I'm a Bob Barker fan, you know. So 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 are those uh, those showcase ladies as well from what I hear. So there are still four active participants in this uh in our in the the playoff contest so best of luck to both of them i'm kind of rooting for gay for fat guy he's a bit of a chess whiz and one of the uh fat guy's hobbies is chess not that i'm good at it but uh it is interesting so i got a little bit of skin in the game rooting for him but we'll see what happens you gotta win gay for fat guy you gotta pick the right one and And he's appealing to my vanity and just to be on the opposite side i'm gonna take uh, team intergalactic planet there we go so go ipt you Fact, think you think it's roses on this show? It's acrimonious this relationship. Trust me. <laughs> the JS seven one five name of the week honorable mentions. Fat guy, take it away. Like a good neighbor. Fat guy was there. See, I did the jingle. I play along, and it's a fun one. It's a fun one. Thanks. Compound now we're gonna frat. get a copyright strike. Do you think we could? That would that would be interesting. That would be interesting. That boy would that be egg on State Farm's face though, wouldn't it? <laughs> you know, just come to attacking some little gambling channel. Real cool. But it, realistically, they're a sports book too, being an insurance company. <laughs> Compound fractures make me hungry for drumettes. Okay, I get that. I get that. The inner carnivore, the inner cannibal coming out. Mahomes is where the heart is. Well, that's a nice one. You can be soft. You can be soft. Fat Guy's diet consists of KFC and a bag of Doritos, sweet chili heat. I do like the sweet chili heat. I don't really buy chips, I'll be honest. Fried chicken is a thing for me. I much love it. I've been, been fooling around with the air fryer lately, though, and uh, it's you're not going to get the same thing. I get that, but it's decent. It's decent, and uh, you know, even I could roll back a few calories or two, despite you know not wanting to lose the the moniker, much like uh, uh, Doug Heffernan and uh, in that show with uh, uh, Jerry Stiller and that other woman. I smell three Jeffersons. Ooh, crude humor, pointing that at Dylan Todd Fields' inevitable uh, losing football bet to the fat guy. By the way, Dylan paid. And Dylan manned up and honored his commitments. So uh, we we have some more uh, uh, Dylan bets for the next year, which we'll disclose at the start of next year. But believe me, they're written down, and he will be beholden to them. Andy Reid's walrus mustache, just a you know topical. It works. It's 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 a standard one. Uh, R.I.P. the Saints. R.I.P. Todd Field. Two shots at him. Boom, and a hundred games. Uh, 100 Games is an inside joke about the Discord, about uh, certain people's professions and certain results they had on a certain day. And uh, we'll leave it at that. This is the JS715 Name of the Week. Whoa, kaboom! And then on to the JS715, not the name of the week, as we just heard from Tim Kitzrow, the the man, the myth, the legend, Tim Kitzrow. But we have the JS715 Name of the Year, fat guy. No more Gordy Dodd. Now... I'm pretty sure that this person that made this name isn't from anywhere near where we live. And uh, Gordy Dodd is a furniture salesman 
uh, on Vancouver Island, which is close to where we live, but still not that close. But his, uh, the Vancouver Island has their own TV, and you kind of like it bleeds over into lower mainland Vancouver TV. Everyone knows Gordy Dodd. He makes uh, very funny commercials, poking fun of himself, usually as like Superman or Batman or like Indiana Jones or something. And his accent makes it all the best. Quite a big fan of Gordy Dodd. And if I were buying furniture on the island, that's where I'm going. Dodd's Furniture. That's our first corporate uh, non-sponsor, Big Rye, unofficial. It, it sure is. So check out Talk about <laughs> check out Dodd's Furniture's commercials on YouTube. You guys are not going to be You will uh, enjoy it. Pleased. So why it's the name of the year is this was a throwaway line, throwaway subject by Big Rye and I. And some guy in the States, presumably, goes figures it out on the internet and goes, yeah, this is the one. No more Gordy Dodd. Winner. Yeah, Winner. that's that's name of the year quality up. right there. Congratulations. Year quality. Remember to make your pick for Super Bowl 55 at BigRyanTheFatGuy.com. There is a t-shirt on the line for those top four participants. If you can get the right team and the right score, the t-shirt is all yours. And like A for Fat Guy said, he needs that t-shirt. Times are tough. Times are rough. So he's got more on the line than just, just pride for that one. This clothing. Super Bowl 55 picks against the spread. Like you guys see here, the Chiefs. They are minus three and a half to minus three point favorites. 64% of early betters are on the Chiefs. It's interesting, fat guy. You got any last thoughts for this uh, final Super Bowl picks against the spread video for the season? You don't always have to gamble. You can just enjoy things, right? You know, and this might be one of those things. You're with family. No need to stress about a game necessarily. If you do really see value, Bet either side if you can find value. Here's a good example. If you're betting with friends and they say, who do you like? Well, if I'm going to get an even money proposition on the game, I'll take the Chiefs all day. You know, if you're going to get a spread with no juice, Tampa Bay three and a half is probably a good play. You know, there are, that guy has made a, not a great living, but enough to, you know, pad this gut for taking, you know, bets like that with people. Oh, who do you want? Well, you know, if it's an even money, I'll just take the favorite. You know, if it's a spread with no juice, I'll take the one that usually has a lot of juice on it and I'll get that at even. You can still find value everywhere. But uh, as far as, you know, forcing a bet, this isn't the time to do it. Cup up bros for Super Bowl 55.